Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about Chart.js, which is our second way of creating charts using our JavaScript and HTML. We already covered our Plotly.js, which is a library very useful for creating charts, which that video is the video before this one that I'll give you link in the description and card in the top corner you can watch. In this one, we're going to use the same data that we had at the last of previous video, which is going to be our date, which are our months. And here we have the price for the other products. And if you have this question of what are these, here we have simple charts, but for coding this kind of charts, we need to put these items which are in the y-axis into one array and values of these items which are our x-axis in another array. And then we define this array and this array as our charts data and we do settings of our chart. Here we have simple index.js JavaScript file which has linked to this HTML file. And inside of this, we don't have anything else. We just have this connecting for our JavaScript. As same as our Plotly.js here, which we're going to use our Chart.js because Chart.js is a library, we can use that library in two ways. One way is to download the JS file and put it in our files and connect that to our HTML file and the next way is to connect our code using CDN. In this one, again, we're going to use CDN. Again, we're going to have this script tag right here with the source being the link of our chart.js CDN, which again, I'm going to give you this link in the description. After that here, we need some tag. So we put our chart into that tag using our JavaScript. So we can have our simple div with the ID of chart. But you can also use one another tag of canvas, which here again we can have that ID of chart for using this tag as container of our charts. And of course, we can give this some styles that we want. And we're going to open our index.html again with our live server, which is a VS Code extension that allows us to maintain and think only about code and what change that we do inside of our code is going to refresh our page automatically and render that for us. So for example, if you have this test right here, you can see that we got this test. And what is this space right here? If you think that is our canvas right here. So let's actually have this style tag right here, select our canvas tag right here and give that order of one pixel solid black that we can see that and let's remove the default margin that we have in our page and let's use our body to the width of 100% and text align to be centered. So we got this result and actually let's make the width of this canvas to be 95% for example. And here we can have some padding top of let's say one rep. Now this is our canvas that we're going to work with. Now let's jump into our index.js, which we have these two arrays. For creating chart using our chart.js, we need to create object of chart, which we have class of chart because of importing our CDN of chart.js. So here we create new chart right here, and then we use the constructor, of course. And inside of this, we need to pass several items. First thing that we're going to pass is, of course, the ID of the tag that we want to use. Here you can see that the ID is chart. So we put the chart right here. And then for second parameter, we're going to have some object, which is going to be data about our chart. Inside of this object, we have several properties. The first one that we're going to have is our type property, which is going to define what type of chart that we want. We like this to be bar chart, linear chart, pie charts, or some others. So for a start, we use this bar chart right here. And by putting only the type right here, you can see that we got some results here in our page. After this one, the next property that we have is our data property. And this itself is going to be object. And inside of this, we're going to define what is our x-axis and our y-axis. 
access. But this is a little different from our previous, which was Plotly.js. So here we're going to have property of labels to define our X access, which in this case, this is going to be our date array that we have created. And by using this, you can see that we got those results here in our chart. And after this one, we're going to have property of data sets. And this is going to be array, which contains object itself. And here is the main difference of Plotly.js with Chart.js, which here we can define multiple data sets for the same date and labels that we have. So let's start with the simple one and then we're going to go on. And here inside of our data sets object, which is our first data set actually here, we're going to have the data that we want, which in our case is going to be this price array that we have right here. And by using this, you can see that we got these things and this bar is showing in our chart. But as you see, these are not highlighted and don't have any color. So what we can do is that we can create bar colors to be all one same or different each one right here. And for doing that here in our data sets array inside of our first data set object, we're going to have property of background color. And here, if you pass the color that you want, for example, let's say we put green right here, you can see that all of our bars turned into green. But if we want to have different color for each of these bars, we can do that here too. So instead of putting the name of color here, we put array right here. And inside of this, we define our color. So let's say we want this red. After this, we want the other one to be green. So after that, we want this blue, which need to be in a string. And let's say after this, we want to have this violet color. And just like this, we need to have 12 color, which I'm going to create some array right here with the name of colors, which is going to have 12 colors right here. So let's grab these one from here and paste that here. So we got four right here. Let's add some more. Let's say we want gray, black, orange, yellow, and let's reuse some other colors. So let's say again, we have this red here, green, blue. I think this is enough. We need to add one more. Let's say this one be purple. And here we pass this array that we created with the name of colors into this background color property. So we use this and you can see that we got different colors for each bar right here. But if you pay attention that you can see our Y axis starting from number five. And that is why because we don't have the first one and third one as same as this last one appearing. So if we make one of these the value of zero. So let's make first one to be zero. You can see that we got all of them appearing right here. After these one, we're going to talk about the layout of our chart and actually the options that we can have. For example, you can see that here we got this color with the undefined text near to it. If we want to hide this, for example, here inside of our code, after we have this type and data, we're going to have another item with the value of option. And here this again is an object that here we can work. The thing that we have right here has the name of legend. So if we want to change that here, we use this legend right here and here again, we pass object and inside of this, we can have controls of that. For example, here we want to make play to be false. So if we do this, you can see that we don't have that thing no longer inside of our chart. And as same as that, we can have our title. So let's say here after this legend, we're going to have this title one, which again going to be object and here we define the text that we want into our title. So let's say here we have tasks per month. But as you see, this is not shown. And that is because of we didn't have declared and put display property in here. We need to use this display property on all of our items inside of this option. So we're going to have this display to be true. And now you can see that we got our title right here above of our chart. But what if we want to make these one to be horizontal instead of vertical? So for doing that, 
First, I'm going to copy this one and make this one comment because at the last of the video, we're going to need this code again. Here, I'm going to paste that again, and we're going to have the same result just like that. And actually, let's get rid of this border so our charts appear more pretty. Now here, for having horizontal chart, what we need to do, instead of this bar type that we type right here, we need to pass the type of horizontal bar. And by using this, you can see that we got the horizontal chart right here. Now, again, let's make this comment and have another one. After our bar charts, we're going to talk about our pie chart. For that, here in the type, we're going to use pi right here. And you can see we're not going to change lots of things right here like plotly.js. This is automatically going to grab these labels and data that we got right here. And we don't need to use other things to create our pie chart. And again, if we hover on these one, you can see that we got the values right here. Which first one is being our x axis and labels. And second number is going to be our data. And we can hover on them and get all of the results. And when we have this, you can see if we hover on these, we got this result of first appearing number is going to be the x axis and our labels and second one be our data and we can hover on all of them is going to show us the label data and the color of the bot and as same as previous one here again we're going to have our hover mode which is going to define and give us the exact value of our bars for us which first one is going to be again our labels and second one to be data. After this, let's again comment out this part right here and have another definition here after that. And now here, let's talk about our donut chart. And for doing that, here we need to make type of our chart to this donut. And here you can see that we got this whole right. But pay attention for how this is going to be written. It's not like the plus VJS donut. And this is a little different. And again, if we hover, you can see that we got the exact same result. And we can make the display of this, for example, false. You can see that we don't have title here, or you can use actually zero and one right here. If you're comfortable with that, you can do all of these for true and false. After this, now again, let's make this comment and have another one. And this time here, we're going to make the type of our chart to be lot and by using this you can see that we got this result right here but as you see this is not very pretty to look and not very good chart and that is because coloring in line charts are a little different here so here we have this background color which if we make all of them to be red for example you can see that all of the colors here become red but another thing that we can define here which is useful is our border color. And for example, for showing you if we make this green, you can see that we got this line to be green right here. So it's better to have both of these to be one color, but different opacity here in the background color. So let's make this as RGBA values. We want the border color, for example, to be blue. So we pass zero for green and red and we pass 255 for the blue and we want 100 percent for the opacity and here in the background color let's say again we got that blue but with the opacity of 0 0.2 and this is how we can have more prettier charts in our line type of chart as I told you, you know that we can have multiple datas to be assigned to the same labels right here that we have this data sets, which inside of this array, how many data set that we create right here is going to have its own numbers, right? So actually let's here add another one, pay attention that we're inside of this array of data sets and after we have this object right here, which be our first data set, we're going to create another one. And what we have here, again, we're going to have these values right here. Let's make these prettier and let's actually have another one here too. And here we need to change the state. But instead of creating this array again for all of them, I'm going to copy this one. And instead of passing the array name here, we pass the actual 
array for these. And then we change the value. So let's say here we're going to have numbers only growing up. So we got this result of numbers right here. And let's make this to be in the shade of green instead of blue. So we make this 255 2 and this one to be 0. And after this, actually, we got our first one to be 11 items here. So let's add another number of, let's say, 5 here. So we complete our array right here. And after these one, let's say we got another set of numbers here, which are again some random numbers. And we want this to be in the shade of red. So we make these one 255. And by using this, you can see that we got three lines right here and here in the background. When we have only blue, for example, it's only blue. When it's coming with the red, it's going to be purple. When red combines green is going to give us yellow and this kind of thing and if you don't want this much of color right here you can make the background color of the all of them to single thing for example let's say we want to make background color of all of them to be blue for doing that we grab the background color of blue code that we got right here and we're going to make all of them just like that and here you can see that we got that kind of result and we can change the opacity so this be pretty and this is how you can have multiple lines inside of your chart and now let's have all of our charts in the one place and one page to get so for doing that first we need to make all of our items uncomment that we have commented out during the video so we got this one and i'm going to collapse all of the items so we can maintain easily So let's collapse all of them and we can remove this space between them too. So in total, we're going to have five items. So here, let's come to our HTML5 and create five canvas tags, right? With the names of chart one to chart five. And here, let's pass those IDs here. So we get one, two, three, four, and at the last, this five. And you can see that we got all of them right here. And here in our canvas, let's make this max width be, let's say, 50%. So we got this result. And let's have our border again right here. And make the display of our body to be flex. And now if we open our page, you can see that we got all of these. And let's actually make the max width here to 20% because we have five items right here. So you can see all of them here in one line play. And all of them has their own function out. And of course, you can do this to make any design that you want. For example, let's say we get rid of this flex showing right here. And we make the max width. And we make this max width to the 50% right here. And have some margin around of our items so let's say we want one room for the top and bottom and 25 percent for the sides that we got all of them here in the center mode just like this and if you want to make all of the colors only one thing here you know that you can do that by using this color to be for example simple blue here you can see we got all of them changed this blue except, except of this which we have defined multiple colors here inside of our data sets which if we remove these ones too that will going to be only blue too so you can see that we can have this kind of dynamic coloring let's say we make this green actually we need to change the color of the, these items too so let's make the colors array pass to this one so you can see this all of them to be green and maybe you want them to be red you can do all of these things by chart js please give a like and subscribe to catch next videos